Okay guys, it's Jackie and today I am going to be sharing my high school stats or the stats that got me into Cornell. Oh, and um, before I get started, I was gonna read a quote by one of my classmates. I'll put it up on screen. So she posted on her Instagram like a Q&A and one of the questions was, will you ever share your stats that got you into Cornell? And her response is very lengthy. I think it's important that this is said, so here's my opinion of the day. Yes, it's good to look at stats as a way to get a general idea of where you stand in the college process, but I think that nowadays we obsess over this idea of having the perfect stats to get into a college. Here's an idea. There is no perfect set of stats. You could literally have a 100 GPA and 1600 SAT score, but if you don't actively involve yourself in things you care about or if you don't write a good college essay, you won't get into a college. Stats are only one aspect of your college application, so if it's not perfect, then that's okay. But let's be real, none of us are. If you ask me personally, I don't mind saying what my stats or my extracurriculars or whatever are, but I should not be what you are aiming for. You should be aiming to be you. I am in no way the ideal or perfect Cornell candidate. If you ask me why I got in, I'll be quite honest and tell you I really don't know. In the real world, no one is going to care about what score you got on the SAT because honestly, these numbers are worthless. My stats are not the reason why I got into Cornell. But you know what is? The amount of effort and work I've put into getting this far. If you read this far, thank you for reading my two cents. So, um, let me log into my common app. I have not gone on it for so long. Wow. This is crazy. Okay, personal information, blah, blah. You Do not need to know that. Someone did ask after my last video about connections or like legacy or something. And I was, a, I was just a little bit upset when I first read it, but then I was like, I mean, this makes a lot of sense. Like legacy is like a huge factor in the college application process so i understand why some would want to be asking that so the colleges that i have legacy to are shandong dashue also known as shandong university which is a province in china which in english is university of science and technology of china okay so yeah i do not have legacy to cornell i don't have any sort of connections there whatsoever. I don't have any sort of connections to any of the colleges that I applied to because I certainly did not apply to the colleges that I have legacy to. So there's that. And then let's get into my grades. So freshman year, I took AP Mandarin, Honors Math, and some other regular courses. So technically you're not supposed to take an AP class freshman year in my school, but I just ended up taking it because of reasons, even though I technically wasn't supposed to, and I did get a five on the test, and I took honors math, and for the other classes, there is an option to take honors earth science, but I didn't do it because it's really hard. Literally the first day of the class, the teachers go and saying, you will not get an A in this class. So I was like, I'm not taking this class. And then English and history are just regular classes, like you can't not take it, so. And I think I had a 3.91 GPA for freshman year. And then sophomore year, I took AP Bio and AP World, and I got a four on both of those tests. For AP World, my teacher left like right before we started doing like modern world history. Oh, and modern world history is like one half of the entire test. So we kind of just self-taught the whole thing and it was, <laughs> kind of a struggle, not gonna lie. That was fun. And then I took honors math and honors English and I had a 3.81 GPA because <laughs> this was just not a good year for me. Yeah, I struggled with AP Bio a lot. If I could go back and redo sophomore year, I don't think I would take it again, but not only my GPA, but my mental health was not the best. And after that, I learned like my mental health is more important than anything else that could ever matter in life. Also in combination with the fact that the other courses were also pretty hard, like my English and math teachers are pretty harsh graders. I guess what I learned from it is to never 
compromise and if it's not a class that i'm like absolutely in love with then i'm gonna make sure to not take it oh i also switched to latin before in freshman year i was taking spanish and mandarin but then i switched to latin because i just felt it was a better option for me and i liked latin better because after ap mandarin there wasn't really a class to take in chinese junior year i took a push or ap us history and ap chem and honors latin math and english i actually jumped a grade in latin because i studied it over the summer so i was able to take a placement test actually this was the year that covid happened for second semester my school went on pass fail so that really gave us a really nice push and it pushed my gpa like to a 3.90 and i got into honor roll oh but then because of covid my ap scores actually went down and i got a three on both of my ap tests because I just didn't really have the energy to study or try, so yeah. And then this year, I'm taking AP Macroeconomics, Physics 1, and AB Calc. Usually for my econ class, you take both micro and macro, but this year because of COVID, they're only doing macro, and if you wanted to do micro, you have to study a bit on your own, so I just chose not to do micro. And for English, there are only electives, so I just took film and literature. It doesn't really matter because it's all like the same. And I'm also taking AP art. I actually don't know my GPA right now because I haven't checked all year. So my SAT and other testing that I submitted. So I took world history and the bioecological subject test sophomore year. And I got a 730 world history and a 780 on the bio one. And I actually didn't study for those. So yeah, I think I did decent for not studying. And then I took the SAT three times. The first time I got a 1460, second time I got a 1460. And then finally, by the third time, I got a 1540. So. I was like, I'm done. Super scored, my score would still be a 1540 because my last test had like better scores than the previous ones combined. So I sent in that and my essay was 666 or 18, even though like it's not really necessary. Obviously they canceled it. So, you know, colleges don't really ask for it anymore. And some advice I would give about the SAT is to not take it until you're absolutely ready because I kind of jumped the gun. My first two times, I felt like I wasn't prepared and my practice tests weren't reflecting the score that I wanted they were reflecting the score that I got, which was 1460. So if I could redo that again, I would wait until I felt absolutely ready to take it so I wouldn't have to retake it like so many times. And, and oh yeah, also I made it to PSAT National Merit Finalist. Um, what did I get from PSAT? I think I got a, a 1480 out of 1520. So the cutoff in Massachusetts, I think is just about what I got. So I like, I was very close to not making it to semi-finalist status, but I got really lucky this year. And um, for the finalist status, all you have to do is submit an essay. So I just copy and paste my personal essay and I submitted it. And yeah, I made it to finalist status, which honestly isn't that different because the majority of people who make it to semi-finalist status make it to finalist status. But you know, if I win, then I might potentially get a huge scholarship, so. Okay, next, my extracurriculars. I've done a couple clubs. I think I did yearbook freshman year and I was in Asian Student Union, but that was really more of a hangout thing. Sophomore year, what did I do sophomore year? Um, oh, I started working sophomore year. After sophomore year, I had a consistent job at Kumon until COVID started. And then junior year, I got a second job at a local elementary school. So I was working two jobs junior year. That was like a lot of work. I quit yearbook because yearbook was just too much work and I just could not handle it and I did not like it at all so there's that and then i was also volleyball manager junior year and i'm volleyball manager again this year and this year i'm also leading a club called i'm not going to share the name actually it's going to tell you where i live but essentially what we do is we teach chinese speaking seniors english and we hold like monthly lessons so i've been leading that club this year but i don't think i actually put it on my common app so Oh, I was also volunteering in my school. I was doing peer mentoring is where you give new students tours. Peer tutoring is where you help tutor some students. I think I did specifically math, but there's also like an English option. Okay, um, let's talk about my essays then. 
So for Cornell specifically, first my personal essay, for me, I really do feel that I got into Cornell because of my personal essay. I think it was my personal essay that pushed me over the edge and got me that acceptance letter instead of maybe a wait list. Um, and then as for the other supplemental essay, Cornell has one where it asks you like what you want to study and why. I talked about how I'm double majoring in anthropology and Chinese or caps. And obviously I'm Chinese, in case you couldn't tell, I speak Chinese at home and Chinese language and culture and literature is something that I want to study and Cornell had the best major for that which is China and Asia Pacific Studies. Like essentially international relations to China but you do get that super huge language and culture study. And as for my other essays, I don't know if I got in or not but essentially I talked about the same thing. I want to study anthropology at your school because you have such and such classes that fulfill what I want to study blah, blah, blah. going into their specific major departments and finding classes or like research or studies that I wanted to learn about. So yeah, and if I had some advice is to do everything super early. If college is something that you know you want to pursue, then you need to start. You really, really need to start as early as like freshman or sophomore year because I know sometimes colleges or like schools even give students a timeline of when things should be done. Junior year, you should start studying for the SAT and then take it late junior year and then start thinking about college like over the summer and then start applying once senior year starts. And that timeline is wrong. The general suggested timeline by people professionals who are in the business is to start as early as sophomore year sometimes even earlier and you really should be going on tours to colleges junior year start applying like before school even starts which I actually I feel like applying during the summer makes a lot more sense to me because then you don't have to worry about it when you're a senior and you can just like chill I guess it just it relieves a lot of the stress also do a lot of research I know a lot of people kind of just apply to schools that they know well or schools that other people will go to or like their friends go to or something and yeah that's a good way to like get a general idea of what colleges are out there but I feel like you're missing out on a lot of other opportunities if you just apply to the ones that other people around you go to or know and you know maybe some smaller school has a really great program that you want to do but you didn't do enough research to know about it and also take it seriously it really depends like how into college you are college definitely isn't the be-all end-all and something else specific to my situation is the pandemic obviously it had a big impact on my grades and testing in general. Cornell at least saw like, I don't know the numbers, but a, ton, a shit ton more people than normal applied because they got rid of the testing requirement. So the acceptance rate went way down because of that. Keep in mind that everyone's process is different. You don't have to compare yourself to other people. Focus on you. You are the most important. That is my stats video. I hope you enjoyed. Honestly, I feel like after I film these videos as I'm editing or something, I'm like, oh, I should talk about this so you know i'll probably like have so much stuff to add when i'm editing but then i'm too lazy to go back and like film stuff yeah i hope you enjoy